Blessed day, everyone. Neophyte DAG bringing you another message. And this message is called the Lord Protector Oliver Cromwell of England, Ireland, Wales, and Scotland was a person of color. In our modern day term, we say a black person. And with this series, I always try to remind people of Job 9 verse 24 which does warn us that the earth is given into the hands of the wicked and the wicked will cover the faces of the judges, the leaders, the rulers, the people of color who have done things in the past. The wicked will take away their identity and paint that identity to be an image of a Caucasian person. So it is warned of in Job 9.24, so this is not something that anyone is making up. It really has happened. And I've done enough of these series. If you check the video log that I've done, you'll see that a lot of people that we think that were Caucasian are or were in fact people of color. This is not to set any sort of dividing line between the races, but you have to give the credits where it's due. You have to give the history to the persons where it's due. In this message, we're going to also talk about the Testament of Asha 7, where this warns that the children of the house of Israel will be scattered across many different lands, and they'll be scattered in their own lands because they'll be imprisoned in their own lands, and then there are others who are in different lands that will be sent over to join those who are in prison in their own land. And that's where we get to the story of North America and the Caribbean and Central America and South America as well. But we're going to focus the story on North America, where there are people in North America who are going to be scattered on their own land. And then there are others who are going to come from other lands in Europe and then join those who are scattered in their lands and as well be scattered themselves and their identity taken away. Oliver Cromwell was one of the person that's responsible for the scattering of people of color out of Europe into the Caribbean, North America, and a little bit of Central America, but mainly in the Caribbean and North America. So that's why I'm introducing to you the Testament of Asha 7. Lord Protector Oliver Cromwell of England, Ireland, Wales, and Scotland, who was he? He was a political figure during the time of the 1640s, and he raised quite a controversy because he dethroned the King of England at that time, and the people or the Parliament of England made him the Lord Protector of England because there was no king at that time to succeed the one that he had dethroned and beheaded. So they made him the Lord Protector. This is an image of him, not sure if it's a true image, but this is what's being presented to us these days as the image of Oliver Cromwell. And we're going to stay away from the image. We're going to go with the wording of what he actually looked like and what was his complexion. A bit of history around the Lord Protector, Oliver Cromwell, he was born in England. He lived in England. He was a member of Parliament, as I have mentioned before. He dethroned the King of England at the time, which was King Charles I, which we have covered in a previous message, who was a person of color as well. And he did that in 1649. Later on, he beheaded King Charles I in 1649 as well. He chopped his head off as part of the punishment that was handed to King Charles I. He was declared Lord Protector for life over England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales in 1653. And he founded and established in the Caribbean the colony in the island of Jamaica in 1655. So this is to all my folks who are from Jamaica, just to know that this is a man that had set up and established the English-speaking country that you're now living in, Jamaica. He, this is now part of his infamous act, 
He deported from England, Ireland, and Scotland to Jamaica, Barbados, Virginia, South Carolina, Maryland, New England, many dark-skinned Irish, Scottish people that were loyal to the Jacobites, which were the King Charles I, Stuart, line of family and loyalist. And he did that from 1649 to 1658. And I'll pause right here because there's a lot of misconception that he deported a lot of Caucasians at that time. But no, that's not the truth. The truth is these people were dark skinned people that were deported from these countries into these countries in the Caribbean and North America. The key to note, which I'm going to point out at the end of this message, is the classification as white has nothing to do with your skin color during the time of Oliver Cromwell and King Charles I. Nothing to do with it. It was a social status at that time. If you were a rich person or a poor person, regardless of your color, but you're from Europe, you were given the classification as white if you're living in North America. If you don't belong to any of that class I just described, you were given the classification as black. So let's keep that in mind. He, Oliver Cromwell, also deported from England, Ireland, and Scotland to Jamaica, Barbados, Virginia, South Carolina, Maryland, New England, many dark-skinned Irish people, Scottish people that were Catholic or converted to Catholic from 1649 to 1658. There was a religious war going on in Europe at that time who were Catholic from who were Protestants. England at that time and many of the countries that were connected with England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales were also Protestants. They did not want the Roman Catholic to invade into their Protestant countries. So when King Charles was believed to be converting to Catholic, that's when Oliver Cromwell took it upon himself to dethrone King Charles I and wipe out that possibility of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales being converted to Roman Catholic. And anyone who was loyal to King Charles I or anyone who were Roman Catholic or converted to Roman Catholic as a part of that King Charles I influence was deported out of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales and sent to the Caribbean, the West Indies, which was a classification of Jamaica, Barbados, and North Carolina, South Carolina, Maryland, New England, and Virginia. So let's get into Oliver Cromwell, who he was in terms of his complexion, because the judges were covered up, painted over, and I have to unpaint some of the judges, even though some of these judges don't have a good character behind them. But I have to let history speak for itself. We'll take a look at this book, Charles I, written by A.E. MacKilliam. And on page 139 of this book, it tells you Cromwell was a gentleman, farmer from Huntington, Donshire, who entered Parliament at the beginning of Charles I's reign. And we did cover that. If you jump down further, his complexion was muddy and sallow. His eyebrows large and bristling and his nose red. There was a big commotion about his nose, but we won't figure, we won't concentrate on his nose in this message. We'll go back to his complexion was muddy and sallow. So in these ancient writing, you won't get specifics that clearly. So you'll have to go into another book now to find out what is muddy and what is sallow. To find that out, we'll go to the Webster Dictionary of 1828. This is what it will come back with. Muddy, we'll look at the fifth meaning of it, dark, of the color of mud. 
the light's telling you he's of a dark color, the color of mud. We also pull out sallow, a yellowish color tinged with dark yellow. So putting the two together, he's a dark skin complexion person. If you want to put it in our modern day term, he's a black person. I don't like to use that word black, but I have to tie it back to what you're used to because that's the word that you've been given, but that's not the proper word to identify us as melanated people. We're people of color, we're melanated people, dark skinned people, but the classification has been pushed down to us as black. So I'll interchange between the two, but we are, and he was a person of color, a dark skinned person. We'll take a look at another book, Cromwell the Lord Protector by Antonia Fraser on, on page 63 of that book. Cromwell, ruddy complexion. So now we're getting another classification for his complexion. On that same page, it talked about Richard Baxter, who wrote a description of Cromwell, wrote his complexion was sanguine. So we have two more complexions that we need to find out what those words mean. Page 231 of that same book, Cromwell was hideously ugly. Again, they didn't like his nose. His nose was a big reddish color nose. His favorite nickname for him were nose, copper nose. What's the possibility of a Caucasian person being nicknamed copper nose? once you know what the color of copper looks like, almost next to impossible. This was a dark skinned person of copper color. Copper is a brown color. So clearly Oliver Cromwell was a brown skinned person or a dark skinned person, whichever one you want to classify him as. But his complexion was sanguine, it's telling you again. Same book, page 577. Description given by a Venetian ambassador, his name is Sangredo. The Lord Protector, he wrote, had a ruddy face, big nosed. Again, his nose is going to keep coming up. His nose is really big and red. Then further down, again, Sangredo, which we had covered, said Cromwell had a sanguine complexion. So sanguine and ruddy keep being used. So let's find out what these words mean. Ruddy of a red color, so a reddish copper color, dark skin complexion person. You have two types of ruddy. You have a ruddy red and a ruddy yellow. The ruddy yellow is what we would call a brown skin person. In our modern day term, we'll say it's a light skin person. So we have dark skin and we have light skin, but they're still of a melanated complexion. We still classify them in our modern day time as black persons. So when you look at ruddy, it's two types. Red, copper colorish, or a light skin color, if you want to get a, a description of that in your mind, take a look at the comedian Sinbad. He's a ruddy yellow. Sanguine, reddish brownish color. That's why I can tell you ruddy ties back to the reddish brown. Color of dry blood. So you have a red copper color, dark skin complexion person. So I want to settle that one. So when you see ruddy being used or sanguine being used, coming back to the same thing, that means this person is a ruddy red complexion person. And I want to give you some examples of ruddy red and ruddy gold visual examples. On the left, that's a ruddy red. On the right, that's a ruddy yellow. One of the key things to note with a ruddy complexion person, they generally have a reddish color hair. That's why you'll get the term ruddy when you see it coming from Europe. You see ruddy, it means their this complexion has that ruddy redness and the hair to go with it.
it's a ruddy person. Ruddy red, ruddy gold. So take a mental note of that. Another book, Oliver Cromwell and the Rule of the Puritans in England by Charles Firth. Page 148 of that book, Cromwell, he was of a sanguine complexion, says Baxter. We know sanguine, that's the reddish color, the color of blood, a brownish reddish color. So we cannot be fooled anymore. So many sources coming back with the same thing. Cromwell is of a reddish brownish complexion with a big nose. Another book, Oliver Cromwell by Peter Gaunt, page 125 of that book. Cromwell by those who met or worked with him. First hand account of Cromwell. And this person that worked with him, Sir Philip Warwick, later recalled Cromwell countenance, reddish, swollen and reddish. And a Venetian ambassador said he's sanguine. So he's a reddish complexion, ruddy red, sanguine, which is a ruddy red, a brownish red, same complexion. Undisputed, Cromwell was a person of color. He's not Caucasian, as you've been led to believe. And he was not deporting Caucasians from England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. Majority of them in the high 90% that were loyal to King Charles, also a dark-skinned complexion person, and that were being influenced by King Charles to convert to Catholicism, were dark-skinned people. And there were most of them, their homes were taken away from them in England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. They were killed in very brutal fashion and the remnants of them were sent to the Caribbean and North America. Cromwell was a person of color. Another book, if you're still not convinced, King Charles I, a study by Walter Phelps Dodge. Page 48 of that book, Cromwell. Again, this person describing him, Hume, he was called a fanatical hypocrite. And this is what they wrote of him. <laughs> a sturdy red ridge of nose. <laughs> His nose keep coming back. He had a very distinct nose. His face swollen and dark. It's a dark skin person. All of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales at that time was being run. Parliament and the crown by dark skin people. Cromwell was dark. King Charles I was a dark skin man as well. And most of the parliament were dark skin people. And the people that were in America at the time running it on behalf of King Charles were dark skinned people. People that were running America at the time of King Charles' father, King James, were also dark skinned people. Conclusion, Lord Protector Oliver Cromwell of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales was a dark-skinned person in our modern-day time. He was a black man. Lord Protector Oliver Cromwell was responsible for a large amount of European people of color, which we classify as black people, from England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales with social status of white to be deported to North America and the Caribbean as political prisoners. Lord Protector Oliver Cromwell was responsible for a large amount of European people of color, which we call black people, from England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales with social status of white to be deported to North America and the Caribbean as religious persecuted prisoner, no doubt about that. But I can tell you something without being able to prove it. And I'm going to prove it to you. June 1657, an act for the attainder of the rebels in Ireland. This is a law that was passed under the influence of Oliver Cromwell 
in what the law says. Children and kindreds of persons attained shall transplant themselves within six months and not to return without license, offenders to be apprehended and committed. Persons convicted shall be banished. This is a law that was on the books of England that was passed by the Parliament being run by the Lord Protector Oliver Cromwell in 1657. You can read through it. I've just done some highlights. First, let's look at the highlights in red. Those are the more critical ones. That's who is being arrested and attained and then shipped out as rebel. All and every children, grandchildren, brothers, nephews, uncles, next of kin or next heir, and active kindreds of all and every prisoner that they were holding at the time were going to be deported. So if you're a family member, you're a child, grandchild, brother, nephew, uncle, or you're related to them, you're going to get deported. And look at the exception now, except if you were a Protestant. That's what I was telling you. It's a religious war between Protestant and the Catholic. And there's another exception there. If you were a Papist, a Papist means a Catholic who have showed that you're willing to convert to being Protestant or you're not going to rattle the cage of the Protestants, then you were not being deported, convicted, or subject to any of this law. So if you were a Protestant, if you were a Catholic that's in good standing, this law won't apply to you. But if you were not any of those two, everything else that's coming in this law relates to you, and this one is for the children and the kins of those who were arrested. They wanted to get them out of Ireland so they won't come back for any revenge or any retributions. There's also a date in which you had to be a Protestant. If you were a Protestant on the 3rd and the 20th of October, 1641, that's the year 1641, then this rule wouldn't apply to you. You would be exempted from this rule. But if you were not, you'll be subjected to this rule where if you are a family member of those who are being held as prisoners, political prisoners, or religiously persecuted prisoners, you would also be subjected to being thrown out of Ireland, meaning deported from Ireland, because Cromwell and those in power at that time did not want family members, especially the young one, to grow up and now seek retribution or revenge for what happened to their family. To be apprehended and committed to common ghoul. A ghoul is a prison. That's where they'll hold them. And they shall remain there without bail. Upon conviction of the said person or persons so offending and aforesaid, him or her or them to be condemned to perpetual banishment. Where are you being banished to? To be sent into America or some of the other parts beyond the sea. Beyond the sea is modern term for the Caribbean in pursuance to the said banishment. So this is the law that was on the books to banish those people of color who were led to believe are Catholics or were led to believe are loyal to King Charles I. And the loyalists are called Jacobites. So wherever you're doing research and you come across the word Jacobites, those are people of color, the same color of King James, the original Jacobites, and his descendants, Charles I, Charles II, and some of his other descendants as we move down the line. James II as well. 
continuation of this June 1657, an act for the attainder of the rebels in Ireland. These were the people that were rebelling against Oliver Cromwell's imposition of a ban, a restriction on them being Roman Catholic. Continuing, persons banished and returning without a license, returning of where? You could not return to England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales once you were banished. Any such person or person so convicted, banished, and sent beyond the seas, the Caribbean, and North America shall at any time after such is or her their being disposed into banishment return into any part of the Commonwealth of England, Scotland, and Ireland without license, what shall happen? Shall hereby be declared a judge to be guilty of returning to your homeland, England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, and suffer the pains of death as a felon by virtue of this act. So the people of color, I'm talking to you guys, if you haven't gotten the message, if you look at your last name, you're going to have England, Ireland, and Scottish names. You were banished from your home country. And if you had tried to return to England, Scotland, and Ireland, and Wales, you suffer this pain of death. To prove this to you, I can't tell you things without proving it. Let's look at this book, Irish Immigration, during the 17th and the 18th century. 17th century, that's where Oliver Cromwell had started this process. On page five of this book, it's telling you, between five and 600,000 men, women, and children were slaughtered or died of starvation as a result of the attack by Oliver Cromwell in Ireland. Many thousands were sent to the West Indies or to American colonies and sold as slaves. So when you're hearing white slavery, it wasn't Caucasian. It was European people of color because they were classified as white as a result of certain class structure in America at the time, and also depending on the time the book was written. This book was written in 1899, which is after 1676, when the Bacon Rebellion put into effect the white and the black classification. So this author is picking up the language at the time that he's writing this book, 1899, when the Bacon Rebellion effects were in full swing. So this author, Thomas Addis Emmett, which wrote this book, Irish Immigration, during the 17th and 18th century, is writing in the language of the classification in effect at his time of writing the book. Let's get back to this. A limited number escaped to the mountains where many died from starvation and the remainder lived for years, a life in common with the wild beasts. With a price upon their head, they were hunted as such. The whole and entire population of this great tract of country disappeared and was literally wiped out. So what I'm telling you, all the people of color that were in Ireland at this time were either slaughtered, starved out, or sent to the West Indies or the American colonies and sold as slave. I'll give you a moment to pause. And now I'm going to throw Cromwell in the mix. Shortly after, Cromwell overran both the south and southwestern portion of Ireland. So this is Cromwell that did this. He invaded Ireland, rooted out all the Catholics or converted Catholics and all those who were loyal to King Charles as the king. 
Cromwell again, over 100,000 young children who had been made orphans or who were taken from their Catholic parents, as I've been telling you, were sent to the West Indies, Virginia, or to New England. Now, I'm going to try to knock some common sense into my West Indian folks. And here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to give you something to think about. If 500,000, or in this case, 100,000 Caucasians were sent to Jamaica, Barbados, St. Kitts, St. Vincent, Antigua, where are they at this point in time? Where is this hundreds and thousands of Caucasian people? Where are they? Because again, they would be there. Remnants of them would be in those Caribbean countries. But it's not. It's a trick on words. They were not Caucasian. They were of the white classification. And that is meant to give you the assumption that they were Caucasian after the classification was changed in 1924 under the Racial Integrity Act. They were not Caucasian. These were people of color. Cromwell was a colored person. King Charles was a colored person. The people that were loyal and that were living in these countries, England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, were people of color. People in America at that time were majority people of color. They were the same people who were enslaving other people of color. Cromwell sold these many people into slavery, and he was a person of color. Hopefully you get the real truth and the idea behind it. Wasn't a Caucasian person selling others into slavery. It was dark-skinned people selling other dark-skinned people into slavery. We have to take the blame where the blame falls. Can't cover it up as the Caucasians have done because we don't like what the history is showing us. Let the history speak for itself. Now, this brings me to the question I've asked my Caribbean folks, especially those in Barbados and Jamaica. And I'm going to concentrate on the ones in Jamaica now. I'm going to let you be aware of this book, which was written by Joseph J. Williams. It's called Whence the Black Irish of Jamaica. Where did they come from? these black Irish, and on this book, there's a cover in it, which shows a typical black Irish in Jamaica. Not making things up. This is a black Irish, which support the story that's following the line of Cromwell was a dark-skinned person who was deporting dark-skinned persons to the Caribbean and North America. Have you ever wondered why all these Irish names are in Jamaica? Mac and Blake and this and that. And I'm going to give you a few names to whet your appetite. Why you have an Irish town in Jamaica? Why? Why is there an Irish town and Irish tradition in Barbados? Why? If you ask yourself the question and you're willing to research your history, you'll find out all the people that were in England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales were dark-skinned people that were deported by other dark-skinned people because of their religious preference and their loyalty to the religious crown of King Charles and the King James line of family, which were believed to be converting to Roman Catholic. Take a good look at this book. It's there. Now, let's read from this book what the author is trying to let you be aware of. This is to my folks in Jamaica, especially those in Kingston. A few years ago, 
and this is in the introduction of this book, a few years ago in one school in Jamaica, Kingston, might be found Burke, Collins, McKay, McDermott, McKeon, and Walsh, with one exception. The last name, who was a dusky brown, they were all of the appearance of full-blooded, Negro-looking people. One was a dusky brown, but he's still a person of color in one school, in one classroom. And I grew up in Jamaica, and I can tell you this is definitely true. We all had English, Irish, and Scottish name, but we were taught that our slave masters gave us these names. That's a lie, people. Get out of the nonsense. This is where it's coming from. The lies are being unveiled right now. We're in the time and the age of truth. There were Collins, Kennedy, McCormick, and Pohare. These are all Irish names. They're Scottish names too. But we're concentrating on the Irish for now. And here again, in only one case, did the feature or complexion indicate any infusion of Caucasian blood. None of them had any Caucasian blood and they all had Irish name. The entire Jamaica and Barbados are Irish name. Then you want to tell me that all the Caucasians were led to believe that they're in Barbados and Caribbean that were deported by Cromwell impregnated and got everyone converted to Negro? Hmm. Nonsense. Truth will always be truth, and it's catching up now with the lies. Perhaps one of the names most frequently met with throughout the island of Jamaica is Burke, popular name in Jamaica. The usual explanation that we've given that, that this book is pointing out for the presence of Irish name is, of course, that the slave former days were generally called by the family name of the master. Nonsense. No master want his slave to have his name. If you look at the slave runaway list, there's no last name for any of the slaves that run away. None. Only the indentured servants got last name because the indentured servants were coming from England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. That's what it meant that Cromwell sold you into slavery, indentured slavery. Usually five or seven years. If you're good, you'll get out of that indentured slavery. If not, they try to extend it as long as possible after you got your indentured service done, then you became a free person of color. Not Caucasians. That's not true. So this book is telling you that's the usual, but that's a lie. But in the case of Burke, at least we don't find any single planter of the name Burke in the early records of Jamaica. So if this Burke person got his last name, from a master that's Caucasian, and there's never a master in Jamaica that has the name Burke. This explanation is turned on its head. It's not true. Never was true and will always be not true. Reading further, and the same may be said in the case of most of the other Irish names that was encountered. Today, among the Negro in the islands, they are not associated with slave masters that were Caucasian. These were dark-skinned Irish, Scottish, and English people that were deported into Jamaica, Barbados, other West Indies Island, and North America. This is the same that we can move this scenario into North America. Virginia, New England, South Carolina, North Carolina, same scenario. But staying with the Caribbean, because I want my Jamaican people to know thyself. This is the route of how you arrived in Jamaica. From Ireland, you were deported into Barbados, then shipped from Barbados to Jamaica. 
until the time where Jamaica now was founded by Oliver Cromwell, you were now being deported directly into Jamaica. What I did here, I give you some pictures of the Irish Jamaican kids, kids that were from family that were deported from Ireland. This is what the remnants of them look like now in the beautiful land of Jamaica. From the classroom, there's the Collins, there's, there's the O'Hare, there's the McCormack, the Kennedy, all of them. This is the Black Irish that Oliver Cromwell deported to Jamaica. And I implore anyone to prove me wrong. Bring the facts beyond the white and the black categorization and give me the color, the complexion of those people Cromwell was deporting. And you'll come right back to this. They were people of color. Here it is in front of you. Now, this is a note I want to leave with my readers of books, historical books. Keep in mind, as I've been telling you, the deception that was placed in the language of books that were written. If the book is talking about a time period of 1676 to 1924, and it's written within that time period, it's going to tell you that the people it's talking about were white, but it's not the complexion white, it's the categorization, the classification, the social status white. If a person was from Europe, or they can trace their ancestry to Europe within that time, 1676 to 1924, they had a white classification. If you could not trace your lineage to Europe, you were given a black classification, regardless of your skin complexion. So if you're reading books, you have to now distinguish who they're talking about and what time period they're talking about. If they're talking between 1924 to our present time, the classification changed with the Racial Integrity Act of 1924, and that act was modified in 1930. Now you're no longer given white or black classification, regardless of being from Europe. It's only if you can trace your bloodline to 100% Caucasian. If you had a speck of non-Caucasian in you, you were given a black classification. If you were of a dark skin complexion, you were automatically given a black classification. So that's what I want you to keep in mind when you're going through books. Early period, 1676 to 1924, Bacon Rebellion caused the classification to be changed from just people to white and black. That lasted until 1924, Racial Integrity Act changed it from being from Europe and not being from Europe to being Caucasian to not being Caucasian. With that said, I'm going to bring this message to a close. Pay close attention to the contents of this message. It will open up a lot of hidden history and for you to do some more work to know who you are and where you're from. You're not from Africa. Most of you, high 90 something percent of you, people of color, you're not from Africa. Even if you're in North America, Caribbean, South America, or Central America, you are native to those land. Most of you, you were already there. And then the rest of you were joined by those who were coming from England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, France, Germany, Netherlands, the list goes on. There were lots of people of color in Europe. They were the dominant race in Europe. During these time that we're talking about, 
1600, the 1700, all the way up until the 1800. The dominant people running the governments and doing all the other things that you're reading about in your history book, majority of them were people of color. Stand strong, be strong, and stay strong.